So I finally got an iPad that can run the Illustrator program. Super psyched. And even though I'm still trying to learn how to use the program on the iPad, because sidebar, there is a bit of a learning curve, which I wasn't anticipating. Um, I wanted to do a tutorial on how to create a flat sketch. Now, some of my FIT students had asked in the past if they could use their iPad to do the work. And at the time I said no, because the program wasn't available for the iPad. Now that it is, I'm really curious to see how much they and you can do on the iPad and how much of the work for now needs to really stay on the laptop. So today I'm going to draw a simple t-shirt, which is how I usually start to teach the program and we'll see how it goes. So there's a lot we can talk about in terms of the interface and the tools and panels, but I want to jump right in and just talk about the tools you'll need for this exercise. So the first thing I'm going to do is start a new letter size document. Once the document opens, I'm going to use a t-shirt template to trace. And this is another time your libraries can come in very handy. I'm going to navigate to the picture icon, which will allow me to import a file from my Creative Cloud libraries. And once I click on the file, it will appear on the page. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the template lighter, same as I do on the laptop. Select the sketch with the selection tool. And when you select your object, another menu will appear beneath the object. The first option in that menu is the transparency. And you can click on the transparency icon and drag to the left to make the sketch lighter. The next thing I usually do is mark center front. You can not drag a ruler onto the page, but you can make the grid appear. So navigate to the tools on the right side of the tablet to the precision panel. And here you'll turn on the grid. And now I'll just try to align the center of the template with one of the heavier guidelines. Next, I'm going to navigate to the layers panel, lock the layer and hit the plus to create a new layer for tracing. Now there are two ways you can trace this T with the pen tool or with the pencil tool. And I'm gonna show you both ways. First, I'm gonna start with the pen tool. It took me a minute to get used to the pen tool on here, but it did get easier as I used it more. Initially, I thought the pencil tool was faster, but as you'll see, I did a lot of fixing after drawing my line, so it may just come down to a matter of opinion. seems to work very similarly to how it works on the laptop. Probably the hardest part was getting used to where the point is placed on the page when I use the eye pencil. Now I'm going to switch to the pencil tool before I reflect so you can see the difference. When you're using the pencil tool, what's really going to make a difference is how steady your hand is, which mine is not on such a smooth surface. Change the amount of smoothing can help, but you're probably going to be doing some editing here. My suggestion is to just draw all your lines as best you can and then go back and edit them. Once you're finished drawing your lines, switch to the direct selection tool to start editing them. 
Tap the line first to select it, then press and hold on any extra points you want to delete. You can also use Smart Delete from the submenu that appears beneath the object to delete the point without reshaping the line. Tap the point and then tap the Smart Delete icon. To reposition a point, tap and quickly move the point where you want it to go. Be careful not to press the point too long without moving it or you'll delete the point. Tap a point to edit the direction handles and use the submenu to convert your points to corner or smooth points as well as join them where necessary. To add stitch lines, draw the line, then navigate to the properties panel to change the stroke weight and change from a solid to a dotted line. Then, duplicate the line and reposition the second row of stitching. Do any last minute tweaking. And note that I'm not drawing in any of the wrinkle lines, I'm just focused on what will be symmetrical on the opposite side, which is pretty much the same thing that I focus on when I draw on the laptop. Using the selection tool, draw a selection box around the lines drawn on the first side. Then. Navigate to the repeat panel and choose mirror. You now have a full T as you would if you had used the reflect tool on the desktop. You might see a little bit of space at center front and you could double click on the first side of the sketch to move the individual pieces over. But either way, you'll have to join the sketch for the pathfinder to work properly. So select the sketch navigate to the object panel, choose expand, and then choose ungroup. To join the points at center front, use the direct selection tool and make a selection box around the center front points. Note that a clipping mask may have been created when you expanded earlier. So if you make a selection, then the join option doesn't appear. You may need to release a clipping mask first. Continue until all points are joined at center front, and then you're ready to create the shapes. Now to create separate shapes so that you can fill your sketch with different colors, navigate to the Combine Shapes panel and choose the last option, Divide All. Then switch to the Object panel and choose Ungroup. Now you're able to select individual shapes and add color. Select the object to fill, then click the Fill circle at the bottom of the left navigation and choose a color on the color wheel and then on the color square to add a fill color. Choose remaining shapes and color them using the same method. Press the modifier button, which is like the shift and alt option keys to select multiple objects. And as you add color, you may see stitching or other details get covered up. So to change the stacking order, select the object and from the sub menu that appears beneath the object, press the third icon and drag up or down to either bring the object to the front or send it to the back. Add in any desired wrinkle lines, select all the objects, and then from the object panel, choose group. So there are a few things that I do like about using Illustrator on the iPad. The first is that I do think that the pen tool is easier to use on the iPad than it is on the desktop. And for those of you who prefer a more freehand method of sketching, the pencil tool is quite simple to use, even with all the extra editing. Also, I think the mirror option is pretty cool. It's slightly quicker than the reflect tool. But having said all that, there are a few things that I'm not crazy about. One, there are no rulers. 
And this really isn't a deal breaker because you do have the grid, but I would much rather be able to drag a guide. Two, you really have to get used to clicking on a point with the direct selection tool and moving it quickly to edit the placement. Hold it a second too long and it erases it. It's helpful when you actually want to erase something, but I can't tell you how many times I've had to undo because I've accidentally gotten rid of a point. Three, I'm happy there's a shape builder tool, but there's no gap detection option. So the one thing that drives me crazy about using the Pathfinder happens here on the iPad and it becomes real extra to create the separate shapes. Four, this might be different if I had a keyboard, but I can select part of the line, say the hemline, copy and paste it and use it as the stitching the way I would on a laptop. I have to draw another line. And lastly, number five, there's no width profile, so my wrinkle lines don't look as interesting. Again, not a deal breaker, but it does mean I'd have to finish my sketch on the desktop. So can Illustrator for the iPad be a beneficial tool? Absolutely. And for those of you who prefer to sketch by hand or you're new to the software, using Illustrator on the iPad is probably going to be easier for you. But for those of us who have been using it on the desktop, the jury's still out on how beneficial this actually is. But remember, this is only the first iteration of the software, so I'm sure there's going to be an update before the end of the year, and it may prove to be more helpful to the Illustrator vets as Adobe continues to develop software on the iPad. So I invite all of you to try this for yourself, see how you like it, this is just my opinion. You may feel differently. And in fact, share your thoughts about Illustrator for the iPad in the comments below and share any tips and tricks you've come across to make this more helpful. I want to love it. I think I'll at least like it a little bit more. I just have to play with it. Thanks for watching today's video. If you are new to Illustrator for Fashion Design, make sure you check out the links in the description for more information about my classes and to get some great freebies. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this if you found it helpful. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.